from our Fox Business Studios in New York, here again is Jerry Willis. On Capitol Hill, the argument over the growing divide between the wealthy and the poor in America is prominent, but who's really the victim here? And is the problem really the concentration of wealth? Joining me now, Jamu Green, a Fox News contributor, Jamie Cox, a marketing partner at Harris Financial Group, and Alan Haft, the author of You Can Never Be Too Rich. Jamie, I want to start with you. Uh, is the middle class losing ground? Is it getting squeezed here? Well, I think on the lower end of the middle class, absolutely. I, I think that uh, those folks who have a share of income that is uh, for necessities that is greater than 75 percent, these folks are enduring tax increases. They're enduring high commodity cost and inflation of products around the world. I think that that is really having a huge impact on those folks. And they're really getting squeezed out, and therefore the middle class is shrinking, definitely. Well, uh, those... and, and then they're facing a terrible job market. Jamu Green, to you. Uh, when you look at this, you know, we look at it from the business side often, and what you find is a lot of, you know, middle class retailers, J.C. Penney, Sears, all these companies facing real problems with revenues, and some are saying it's because the middle class just isn't there. What do you say? Well, this is 30 years catching up to these companies of growing income inequality, Jerry. And when you look at the strength of our economy, everything that wealthy people can do, the middle class can do better. If you give more money to the wealthy, they will put it in stocks and it will go offshore. It does not go back into the economy. You go it, give it to a family that is you know, struggling to make ends meet. They may save a little bit, All right. but most of Jamu, it is going to go it, back into the in economy. Here. Alan, half to you. Is that true? I mean, do, does the middle class actually put their money into stocks? Into stocks? Well, look, the average 401k, 401k balance in the country is less than $20,000. I think the, uh, the savings rate is at a paltry historical low right now and has a lot of room for improvement, that's for sure. But to Jamu's point, what she's saying is that uh, you know, it's really the problem is the 1%. The 1% is taking too much income out of the system and therefore other people are hurting. Do you agree with that? Not necessarily. I mean, look, I, I think that there's, you know, some of, the, some of the retailers and things that we're talking about are outdated business models. I think some of the newer business models on the market, like the QSR restaurants, like Shake Shack, Chipotle, and Noodles, those are really catering to the, uh, to the middle class, and the middle class are opening up their pocketbooks to those type of establishments, such as a Target that revamped itself, or a Lowman's, or a J.C. Penney and a Sears that are struggling. I think it just, it, it, that, that the middle just class will spend. They're just old-fashioned. Yes, fashion. Absolutely. That's what you say. Jamie, revamp to you. the business model, and they'll come. Jamie, to you, I, I'm going to show you a graphic. So this is some numbers that we picked up from the Institute for New Economic Thinking. They say the share of personal income, the top 5% of earners, are uh, their share of personal consumption, that is, pardon me, is 38%. And that's up from 27% in 1992. So people at the top of the totem pole, the people who earn the most money are spending like, you know, it's anybody's business uh, over and above other groups. Jamu, to you, uh, so you say that basically the 1% has too much of the cash. Do you feel like there's a confined pot of money for income? And if the 1%, the people at the top of the totem pole take too much money, that means there's less for everybody else? No, it shouldn't be confined. The reality is Americans are working harder and harder for less and less. But if there is a strong middle class, that is what will make our economy grow faster. Two ways of fixing this. We have a strong correlation between a stronger and larger middle class and stronger and larger unions. Stop rolling back workers' oh, rights. Increase Alan. the minimum wage. That is how all of our salaries will increase once you increase the minimum Alan, wage. Alan, is, is it minimum wage? Is that what we need? Do we need more yeah. unions? No, because I, I disagree with that. Because if you increase the minimum wage, what's a business owner going to do? They're going to probably reduce the amount of hires that they make. So it's gonna be, it could be counterproductive for sure. I think the answer lies in education. I think you have to instill motivation into a younger audience. Because look, I know a lot of people that started with zero and they made phenomenal lives for themselves, not from entitlement programs or wealthy families, but because they had the eye of the tiger and they went out there and they did something for themselves. And that's best taught at the youngest age as possible. All right, Jamu, Jamie, and Alan, thanks for coming on tonight. Appreciate your time. Thanks for having us.